Okay, this is page F13. And we want to talk about something called meiosis. And you're saying, what's that? We had been spending, our time spent today was on mitosis. Mitosis was the name of the process by which we make more body cells. So it shows right here. We had a zygote, it divided, it became two body cells, divided became four body cells until you reached your adult size of 60 trillion body cells. So we had learned mitosis is how one body cell or somatic cell forms more genetically identical body cells. But there's a different type of cell division, another type. It's called meiosis. It's unfortunate that the mitosis and meiosis both start with the letter M. I understand. It's easy to confuse them. I didn't name them. Meiosis is the special type of cell division that occurs in our reproductive organs. It is the process by which we produce eggs and sperm. So the, the mitosis is the forming of, bo uh, of diploid body cells. Meiosis is the forming, forming of haploid sex cells. So you say, can you say that again? Well, we already gave you the definition of mitosis on page F1. We said mitosis is when a body or somatic cell divides into two genetically identical body cells. So what's meiosis? Let me write it right here. So meiosis, that's when a body cell, a somatic cell, or body cell, in the reproductive organs, in the reproductive organs, divides into haploid sex cells. So you wrote sloppy. Okay, what well, actually says what I just said, we're actually up above. But so meiosis is when a somatic or body cell, somatic means body cell, in the reproductive organs divides into haploid sex cells. And you might say, well, isn't that mitosis? No, mitosis is when a somatic cell divides into other somatic cells, other body cells. So this is a special process by which we make sex cells, which are different than body cells, because they only have the haploid number of chromosomes, not the diploid number. So this occurs in our reproductive organs. Let's see what we wrote at the top. At the top, we wrote meiosis is a special type of cell division in which certain somatic cells containing the diploid number of chromosomes divide into sex cells, pretty much what I just said, or gametes containing only the haploid number of chromosomes. Meiosis occurs only in our reproductive organs, the testes of a male and the ovaries of a female in organisms that reproduce sexually. Each sex cell, each sperm and egg is genetically unique, genetically different. Remember, all your body cells are genetically the same. Now, I, I want to try to uh, clarify a, uh, another couple of things here, and then we'll call it a day for today. Uh, let's, look, here it shows uh, uh, the uh, egg and the sperm. We'll, we'll talk about exactly meiosis more in either a moment or next time. But I want to explain something else. Okay, in the egg, there are normally 22 autosomes in the egg. 22 autosomes. And an X sex chromosome. That's what we normally see in an ovum or egg. Now, if there's 22 autosomes and an X sex chromosome, that's 23 altogether. Is that okay? So of the 23 chromosomes, 22 of them are called autosomes. You would say, I don't get that. What are those? Those are the chromosomes that determine things like eye color and blood type and how tall you are. The X sex chromosome that's in the egg is going to determine, uh, among other things, the gender or sex. Now, what about the sperm? 
Of the 23 chromosomes in the sperm, 22 of them are also autosomes, just like in the egg. They determine things like eye color and blood type, just like in the egg, the ovum. Now, what about the sex chromosomes? It's either an X or it's a Y. It's one or the other. So it's either an X or a Y sex chromosome. Not both. It's either one or the other. So half the sperm, half the sperm produced by a guy have a 22 autosomes and an X, and 50%, half the sperm, have 22 autosomes and a Y. All right, so let's just see how this works, how you get a boy baby or a girl baby. It's always something that people find, you know, useful to know. All right, the normal eggs always, always can only have an X. So if the sperm is carrying an X and it unites with the egg, which normally always has an X, then the zygote is going to have what? Two X's. And if the zygote has two X's, that's a female. Okay, so let's just, we'll just write that down. If there's two X's in the zygote, that's a female. Everybody follow that? Now, on the other hand, if the egg's got the X, which it always does, but it's a sperm carrying a Y, so if the sperm has a Y, it unites with the egg with an X, that means the zygote will have an X and a Y. And that's a genetic male. That's a bouncing baby boy. <laughs> now, one of the questions that students commonly ask is, well, how come all the eggs only can have an X? And how come some of the sperm have an X and some of the sperm have a Y? Let's answer that. It's actually very understandable. It's very easy. Okay, let's, does everybody see the question? How come the eggs always have to have an X? Let's assume that this is, this zygote is XX. It's a female. So for all the females in the class, this is you. Is that the, now, when this cell divides, remember, in mitosis, it simply makes a copy, right, of those original 46 chromosomes. So if there are two X's in the zygote, there'll be two X's in each cell that develops from that zygote. So, and then when they divide, there'll be two X's in each body cell. So if you're a female, in the nucleus of every cell in your body are two X sex chromosomes. And every cell of your body is just a copy of what was in the very first cell you started out as. If you started out with two X's as a zygote, then you've got two X sex chromosomes in, ev in the nucleus of every single cell in your body that developed from that zygote. So if you've got two X's in the nucleus of every cell in your body, how could you produce eggs with a Y? Where would a Y have come from? You don't have a Y sex chromosome in any cell of your body. So you can only produce eggs with an X. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now on the other hand, what if this zygote is XY? It's a boy baby. So in every cell of a guy, in the nucleus of every cell, is an X and a Y sex chromosome. If the zygote starts out with an X and a Y, then there's an X and Y in the nucleus of every single cell in a guy's body. Since he's got one X and one Y in every single cell of his body, it's easy to understand how in his testes, some of the sperm will have an X and some will have a Y because he's got an X and a Y in every body cell. So when these body cells divide into sperm, some will have an X and some will have a Y. Does everybody follow that? So uh, that explains how you get boy and girl babies as far as uh, how this works. Uh, now, um, let's, uh, the last thing I'm going to do for today then is let's just look at one last thing here at the bottom of the page. So at the bottom of the page, next time I'm going to tell you a little bit more about chromosome anomalies and Down syndrome and so on, and how to test for it and all that. 
And the bottom of the page, I want to tell you a little bit, not a lot of details, about how sperm and eggs are formed. Uh, now, the, the process of making sperm and eggs, these haploid sex cells, is called meiosis. And that word, meiotic, like meiosis, is actually written on the left. Now, uh, the, the way sperm are formed in the uh, testes and the way uh, ova, eggs are formed in the ovaries is similar, but there's a slight difference between the two. Let's see first how the sperm are formed. The producing of sperm in the testes is called spermatogenesis, to generate or make sperm. It begins with a body cell. So these are somatic cells in the testes and ovaries. You'd say, what's a somatic cell? A cell with 46 chromosomes. So this is a body cell with 46 chromosomes in the testes. And what it does, I'd like you to notice, is it doesn't just divide once. It divides two times in a row. Does everybody see that? Now, normally, in a regular cell, it just divides once. Uh, in a body cell, the way we make more body cells by mitosis is it just divides once. Here it divides two times in a row. So by dividing two times in a row, it forms four cells, each with the haploid number of chromosomes of 23. Uh, so we get four tiny little so-called spermatids. They develop a flagellum or tail, and those are called sperm or spermatozoa that can swim. So in forming a, a sperm, let's summarize. We begin with a body cell. Now this body cell has already duplicated the chromatid, so it's got 92. It divides once, each cell now has 46. If it just stopped right there, these would just, just be like regular body cells. But it divides a second time, resulting in cells with 23, the haploid number. So those are haploid sex cells or sperm. Okay, how do the eggs form in the ovaries of a woman? It begins with a body cell in her ovaries, just like it began with a body cell in the testes of a guy. Again, it divides two times in a row, just like in the forming of the sperm. But here's the difference. Each time it divides, it does not divide evenly. Does everybody see that? Because it doesn't divide evenly, uh, we get four cells, just like we had four uh, sperm, but only one of them is an egg, an ovum. The other three are called polar bodies, and they die. So let's summarize. Uh, how is forming an egg, an ovum, similar to making sperm, and how is it different? It is similar, these are similar, in that you begin with a body cell in either the testes or the ovaries. It's similar in that they divide two times in a row, resulting in four cells with a haploid number, 23. That's how it's similar. How is making the egg different from the sperm? In making the sperm, when it divided the two times in a row, it always divided equally. So we had four little cells that are for, called sperm. In forming the egg, it divided unequally each time. So we only ended up with one large cell called an egg or ovum and three little tiny cells called polar bodies that die. So the last point that we'll make for today is, so why? Why did it divide unequally? What was all that about? Some of you may know that sperm are the smallest of all human cells. The ovum is the largest of all human cells. If the egg had formed the same way that the sperm did, the egg would have been as small as the sperm. And, uh, and so if the egg had not divided unequally the way it formed, then uh, these eggs would be as small as the sperm. So apparently, there's a reason why, there must be some reason why the egg's supposed to be the largest of all the human cells. So he, let me just put this together here. The egg actually contributes more to the baby than the sperm does. The sperm only contributes 23 so-called chromosomes. The egg not only contributes 23 chromosomes, but all the nour nourishment for the embryo. 
The egg is the largest of the human cells, and in the egg are all the nutrients. So the egg is contributing not only the DNA, the chromatids, just like the sperm, but also all the nourishment, because it's a big cell. Let's show you the pattern here. Uh, which one between the mother or the father in almost every family, in almost every family in the entire world, with the, only a very, very few exceptions, which parent usually spends much more time taking care of those children? The mother. The mother. Right? The mother almost always devotes a lot more time and energy to raising those kids than the father does. All right? Which one of them, the mother or the father, got up in the middle of the night to bottle feed or breastfeed the uh, baby when it was an infant? The mother. Even if it was being bottle fed, the father usually slept and the mother got up. Which one of those, the mother or the father, carried that baby inside them for nine months? The mother. You see a pattern here? The guys who work with them. Yeah. The, and this, this the, looks like the mother is much more invested in these children than the father is. Well, this even began at the level of the sperm and the egg. To the guy, he thinks that he's giving the same amount as the, of, uh, as the wife, as the mother is. Right? I, I gave 23 chromosomes. You gave 23 chromosomes. We each gave the same amount. Not true. The father gave 23 chromosomes, done. That's it, I did my share. <laughs> the mother's egg contributes not only the 23 chromosomes, but all the nourishment to get that embryo started. Even from the very beginning, that egg was contributing to the development of that embryo more than just the 23 chromosomes. It provided the sugars and the nutrients for this thing to go and start to grow. So that's the one. The egg has to be large to contain all those nutrients that are needed in addition to just the genetic information. Does everybody follow that? So we said that there's 22 autosomes in the egg and 22 autosomes in the sperm. And so when they joined together in the zygote, I wrote here that there are 22 homologous pairs of autosomes. So I don't know if you have that written from last time or not. So uh, there are 22 homologous pairs of autosomes. The word homologous means matching. It's lot similar to the word analogous, similar, matching. So some of you might say, well, I, I don't understand. What, is, what are you talking about here? Well, there are 22 autosomes in the egg. You'd say, OK. 22 autosomes in the sperm. You'd say, OK. So when they join together, don't you have 22 pairs of autosomes? Right. You'd say, well, what do you mean pairs? Well, if you had a left shoe and a matching right shoe, you'd have one pair of shoes. <laughs> right? So these are 22 matching pairs. Well, yeah, we could say 44 autosomes, but they're 22 matching pairs. And the word we usually use is homologous, similar, analogous. Now, uh, let me just try to explain what this actually means. There is an autosome in the egg that determines, among other things, the blood type. There's also an autosome in the sperm that determines blood type. So when these, uh, when these sperm and the egg join together, we actually have a pair of autosomes that determine blood type. Let's be more precise. Let's imagine that the autosome in the egg from the mother specifies the uh, blood type A. Right, blood type A. Let's imagine there's an autosome in the sperm that determines blood type, and it specifies blood type B. So what blood type will this child be? AB. In other words, we all know that who you are, what you look like, is a composite of from, uh, genetic information from both your parents. Does that make sense? So your blood type wasn't determined just by your mother or just by your father. It was determined by the combination of that genetic information for both your parents. And that's true not only for blood type, but for eye color and how tall you are and everything else. So that's why we talk about 22 matching pairs of autosomes. So I gave the example of blood type. If we could have used any other characteristic, uh, there's, uh, these are 22 matching pairs. 
Uh, you should hear more about that in your lecture class about genetics. Now, uh, well, the last thing I want to address, and I touched upon it last time, is we said that sometimes there are uh, the wrong number of chromosomes in the egg or in the sperm. Uh, the very small percent of the eggs that are formed in the ovaries and a small percent of the sperm that are formed in the testes have the wrong number of chromosomes. Uh, and um, the, uh, the, and that, therefore, if either one, the, the egg or the sperm, has the wrong number of chromosomes, then the zygote will end up with the wrong number of chromosomes. Now, the most common of these problems, that, and we mentioned it last time, is called Down syndrome. So let me just uh, describe this. And uh, on page uh, F12, what do, you, what do you have on F12? Nothing. Nothing. OK, good. So what I want to explain is what's known as a chromosome anomaly. Okay, I want to explain a chromosome anomaly. So this is page F12. You say, I don't have anything on F12, precisely. All right. A chromosome anomaly, an anomaly means an error. Something's wrong. We've got the wrong number of chromosomes. So let's imagine. Let's imagine that we've got an egg. The egg is supposed to have 22 autosomes and an XX chromosome. Correct? Just say correct. Yes. You're right. I have no idea what you just said, Mr. Ingrid. You're right. All right. The, the, uh, an ovum, a normal egg, should have 22 autosomes and one XX chromosome. Let's imagine it's got 23 autosomes. It's got an extra autosome. All right, let's say that the sperm is normal. It's got 22 autosomes, and remember, half the sperm have an X and half the sperm have a Y. Let's say it's got an X. So now, when this sperm unites with the egg and forms a zygote, we're not going to have 44 autosomes or 22 pairs. We're going to have 45. And it would be because there was an X in the egg and an X in the sperm, so we've got two Xs, so it's a female. This is actually, uh, the, the, what I've described here is called Down syndrome. <coughs> now, uh, in terms of Down syndrome, the problem seems to be that there's an extra autosome in the egg. Now, is it possible that there could be the wrong number of chromosomes in a sperm? Yes, there could be. But I think I talked about this last time. We said that a small percent of the eggs have the wrong number of chromosomes and a small percent of the sperm. But a woman normally releases only one egg each month. And if that egg that she ovulates or releases has the wrong number of chromosomes, then you're going to end up with a, a, a baby with the wrong number of chromosomes in every cell. In the case of the sperm from the father, when a guy ejaculates or releases sperm, he releases about 360 million sperm. A small percent of them have the wrong number of chromosomes, but probabilistically, <laughs> it's not likely that out of 360 million sperm, the small number that have the wrong number of chromosomes are going to be the champion swimmers and end up uniting with the egg. So there's a bit of a survival of the fittest among the uh, sperm. Uh, I might just mention another aspect to this. Uh, and again, I can't remember if I spoke about this last time or not. Uh, Guys produce sperm. They release a lot of sperm every time they ejaculate, so they make new sperm every day. And in fact, guys produce new sperm every day for the, their entire life. So even a 97-year-old man is still producing sperm every day, probably at a smaller rate, a lower, uh, smaller amount. Uh, uh, but he still, he could still father a child at 97. All right. Uh, Women only release one egg each month. One egg each month. So that's how many eggs a year? Twelve. Twelve. Very good. So a woman releases one egg each month. That's 12 eggs a year. And her ovaries stop working by the time she's about 50. Okay? After around approximately age 50, the ovaries of a woman stop working, and that's called menopause. Okay? Her menstrual cycle stops, her ovaries stop working, she stops ovulating, her ovaries stop working. 
And so uh, a woman's reproductive organs are only working about 30 or so, some odd years, about 30, 35 years. That's a, this is known as the reproductive biological clock of women that doesn't exist in men. Incidentally, this actually makes women become serious, more serious about their life sooner than guys. All right, so a 25-year-old woman is serious about her life, and a 25-year-old guy is clueless about his life. All right? He has no clue. He doesn't understand anything as far as what life is and that life is finite. But women understand this intrinsically because they, this is in part biological. Uh, all right? So anyhow. Uh, usually. Yeah, huh? Usually. Yeah, everything's usually. Okay? But uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, anyhow. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, the thing that I wanted to point out is this. Since a woman only releases one egg a month, which is 12 eggs a year, in her reproductive lifetime, she's only going to release about 400 eggs over 30, 35 years. You can do the math. Just multiply 30 times, 30 years times 12 times 12, <coughs> 360. She's going to release about 400 eggs in her lifetime. So in fact, a girl was born with all the eggs she will ever have. Now she's born with more than enough. She's actually in her two ovaries. She has about 400,000 eggs. And of those 400,000 eggs, she's going to ovulate or release about 400 of them. All right? So that means that if a woman is 40 years old, her eggs are 40 years old. All right? So that's unlike a guy where he's making, every time a guy ejaculates, he releases 360 million sperm. That was more uh, a sperm than a woman has eggs all together in her ovaries when she's born. There's about 400,000. So uh, there's just a lot of differences biologically. So uh, while, while these errors can occur in both the sperm or the egg, it's usually assumed that the problem originated the egg. Again, we're not attributing blame. We just know that biologically these things work differently. Now, uh, the, the sperm, if the sperm had carried a Y, and 22 autosomes are wide, then we would have had a boy with Down syndrome. So Down syndrome has nothing to do with whether it's a boy or a girl. There are boys with Down syndrome, males. There are females with Down syndrome. The problem is an extra autosome. And uh, I think we pointed this out last time. If we actually looked at what's called a karyotype, and the karyotype was shown, if I could find the page, uh, yeah, page F11. If we look at F11, and I think we looked at this last time, so we pointed out that in Down syndrome, there's that extra autosome. This happens to show a normal karyotype or chromosome analysis. Uh, it's got 22 matching pairs of autosomes, you can see, and one pair of sex chromosomes. But in somebody, if we did a karyotype or chromosome analysis on any cell from a person with Down syndrome, we would see three number 21 autosomes. So they've got an extra autosome in the nucleus of every single cell in their body. And as we pointed out last time, uh, one might have thought, so what would be wrong with that, right? Just you got everything you need plus some extra. But either having less than what you should or more than what you should means it's not normal and it doesn't work right. Uh, there are many types of chromosome anomalies. And I want to just mention, uh, uh, the Down syndrome is the one I want you to know, because uh, that's the most common, and I'm sure you've all heard of it. I want to mention two uh, others. I will not test you on them, all right? I will not test you on them. Down syndrome, I will. All right, and I'm only talking about these two other ones because I know that somebody is going to ask me about this, so I'm just beating you to the question. All right? So not, not in, in forming eggs and sperm, not only could there be the wrong number of autosomes, there could also be the wrong number of sex chromosomes. So let's imagine that the egg didn't have one X but had two X sex chromosomes. Now we know an egg can only have X's. It can only have X's, can't have a Y. But it might have an extra X, or it might be missing an X. All right, now let's assume that uh, the sperm that unites with it is an X, right? Could be a Y. All right, now if this sperm with 22 autosomes and an X, so it's totally normal, 
unites with this A, and the number of autosomes is normal. Does everybody see that? 22 autosomes, that's not the problem here, but it's got two X sex chromosomes. That's the problem, it's supposed to have just one. All right, so now we've got a cell, a zygote. It's got the right number of autosomes, 44 autosomes, 22 matching pairs, but it's got three Xs. Does everybody see how we got three Xs? This is sometimes called the triple X syndrome, or the super female. Now, every guy in the class is thinking, my gosh, can you imagine what a triple X female must look like? <laughs> right? We know what a double regular 2X, can you imagine a triple X, unbelievable. It sounds great on paper. Unfortunately, the individual is mentally retarded and usually sterile. In other words, again, if you don't have the right number of chromosomes, having the wrong number doesn't make things better. It only makes things worse. All right? So it sounded good, but it didn't end up being good. So uh, the person uh, is going to look female, but they do, not, but they uh, again, it's associated with mental retardation and other physical problems. Uh, all right, and sterility. Let's consider an, the other possibility. What if this egg had this extra XX chromosome, but this time let's say that it was fertilized by a normal sperm? All right. Now again, the autosomes are normal. The problem here is the egg has this two X's, not one. So now what do we have? When the sperm carrying a Y unites with it, we've got the right number of normal number of autosomes, but we've got XXY. Now it's supposed to be either XX or XY. What is it XXY? This is known as the XXY or, or Kleinfelter syndrome. And uh, this is where everybody usually says, oh yeah, that's a hermaphrodite. It's not a hermaphrodite. That was the reason why I wanted to bring this up, because I know somebody was going to ask me about hermaphrodites. Uh, it doesn't matter how many X's there are. Having a Y confers maleness. So there's, there could be 15 X's in a row. If there's one Y, it's a male. So the person looks male. That doesn't mean they're not, they're not a normal male. A normal male is XY. They've got XXY. But they do look male, basically. But it is associated with mental retardation and other deformities and also sterility. So this is not a hermaphrodite. It's not somebody who has both ovaries and testes. It doesn't matter how many X's there are, if there's a Y, they look male. So that always raises the question, then, then what are hermaphrodites? And for all intents and purposes, there really are no hermaphrodites, for all intents and purposes. All right? What there is, and I do want you to know this word. All right? So I said I'm not going to test you on uh, the super female or Kleinfelter syndrome, but I do want you to know this word. What is a pseudo hermaphrodite? All right. Now, uh, pseudo means what? I wrote in here. Fake, false, right? So it's not a, it's fake. Hermaphrodite refers to, and it actually goes back to Greek mythology, where Hermes, the Greek messenger god who now works for FTD Flores, uh, and uh, basically uh, had a, they had a child with the bodies of a, 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 a son and daughter merged together. This was Aphrodite, the Greek goddess of love. And so uh, they have this her hermaphroditic uh, child. Th that's Greek mythology, okay? It's good stories. Uh, so what is a su pseudo hermaphrodite? That's a hormonal imbalance. And so when you see people of questionable gender, it, in almost every case, there's a hormonal imbalance. The first thing, and I think we may have touched upon this last time, uh, anytime there's an a individual of questionable gender, the first thing they're going to do is do a karyotype on them. And you'd say, what's that? They're going to do this chromosome analysis, and they're going to say, do, or do they have two Xs? They're a, then they're a female. Do they have an XY? Then they're a male. If they've got uh, you know, uh, XXX or XXY, those are chromosome anomalies. They're not hermaphrodites. They're just uh, the wrong number of chromosomes. But they're not uh, hermaphrodites. So let's assume that you've got somebody where uh, maybe it's a uh, female, and she's reached uh, puberty, and she's just got a lot of uh, hair, right? Uh, there used to be in circuses the bearded lady, right? 
So uh, they would do a chromosome analysis. They would see, oh, the person is XX. They are a normal genetic female. But for some reason, they're producing, their body is producing excessive amounts of male hormones. And all this excessive amount of male hormones is causing them to be masculinized. But they are genetically a female. They're XX. So then, the, the, all that an endocrinologist would do today is to correct the problem. Now, there are a number of reasons why a woman's body might be producing excessive amounts of male hormones. I'm not testing you on this, but I'll mention them to you. Uh, some of you who have me for lecture have learned that the adrenal gland produces a male hormone uh, called adrenoandrogen. And if somebody has a tumor of their adrenal gland, they over-secrete those male hormones, adrenoandrogen, that masculinizes them. And so they, what do you do? You remove the tumor from the adrenal gland so it stops over-secreting uh, male hormones from the female, and that'll solve the problem. Another possible cause of a female's body over-secreting male hormones is uh, when the ovaries abnormally start to produce male hormones. This is known as POS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. If anybody's ever heard of polycystic ovarian syndrome, this is, again, creates a hormonal imbalance. But the person is genetically a female, and the idea is just to surgically correct the problem. On the other hand, what if it's a guy, and uh, he doesn't seem to have any facial hair at all. His voice is still so high, and uh, he doesn't seem to, uh, he's not Michael Jackson, but anyhow, the, uh, but, uh, the, uh, but, uh, but, but he doesn't seem to be overly masculine. So perhaps he, he is, they would do a chromosome analysis, a karyotype, they, they would find, let's say he's XY, he is a male, but for some reason his testes are not producing sufficient amounts of testosterone. So what they should, would do is just give him testosterone to take, and that should correct this hormonal imbalance. It's not that he was a hermaphrodite, uh, it, with part male and part female part, uh, parts, nor was the female, the bearded lady, a hermaphrodite. They had hormonal imbalances. Again, hundreds of years ago, they didn't know how to correct this, and they would put them in circuses. Today, the equivalent of the circus is the Jerry Springer show. But what, but what people should do is not go to a circus and not go to Jerry Springer's show. They should go to an endocrinologist and get themselves fixed. All right, that's, uh, this can be all treated and corrected medically.